Let me just share a moment with the audience real quickly. If there was an aha moment I had when I was reviewing uh, the orders of General Logan. I always looked at it as a historic artifact, a little difficult to read because of the phraseology and the verbiage that they used to make the six years ago. But it dawned on me as you get to the period of the end of the passages, it's referring to the future generations rushing and wondering if they would be carrying on the tradition. Then I realized that we are the future generations that continue that. And I'm pleased to uh, see this part of it today. Headquarters, Grand Army of the Republic, Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, hamlet, churchyard, and land. <laughs> in this observance, most formal ceremonies prescribed, a toast and comrades will, in their own way, arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized, comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead, who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the reverie of freedom to a race in chains, and their death a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that, is sacred, all, that is, all the concentrated wealth and taste of the nation can add their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to their memory of slave, their slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed ground. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of arvis or neglect or ravages of time testified to the present or to coming generation that we have forgotten, as a people, the cost of a free and non-divided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slap, and other hearts cold, and the solemn trust ours shall keep it alive as long as the light and warmth of the light remain in us. Let us then at the appointed time gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds that above them are with choicest flowers of spring. Let us raise, raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those who may left among us as sacred charges upon the nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widows and orphans. The purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope, it is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept from year to year while the survival of the war remains to honor the memory of the departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend his friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. I command of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic.